What's up, Barnhill family? And welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So, Nick, Islam Makashev, another night, another spectacular performance, yes. a beautiful Kimura finish of Dan Hooker. And before we get into the video, just credit to Dan Hooker for doing what he's done. He's been away for his family for such a long time. He mm -hmm. took this fight on short notice, knowing that stylistically it was a nightmare for him. So credit to Dan the man. Even though it was a quick night for him, I did become more of a fan of Dan. Yeah, and the UFC loves a guy like Dan Hooker. So you got to give him a lot of credit. He went in there. He stayed away from his family. He didn't get the results he wanted at all. But he did get a big paycheck. You know, the UFC did say that they, they helped him out a little bit and because of all the time away from his family and all the time he had to spend in quarantines and lockups and obviously preserving a fight that they wanted to uh, a fighter that they wanted to oh, see yeah. in there uh in islam makashev that seems to be on the the last person on everybody's tongue nobody wants to fight islam yeah people are backing out every time they get an opportunity to they get a little bruise or a little something a little banged up and they're out of the fight against islam because they just don't want to fight him Dan Hooker's the man. His stock went up, in my opinion. I will always be a fan of Dan Hooker for saving this fight because this was a special card. I really do feel like with the UFC trying to give it, give it to people for free, they wanted to pull out all the stops. Yeah. And it being in Abu Dhabi where there's a, a very large um, Muslim, you know, Fan base, fan yeah. base there, and and, and the the Russians really, you know, there's there's a close tie there. They they wanted to see their guys perform, and it would have it would have sucked if Islam wasn't able to compete on this card because he just couldn't find an opponent. So Dan Hooker is a man to thank of of many for this awesome card. Yeah, and you know, again, when we go when we do these videos on the Sunday after the fight, we can't look at the UFC's rankings just yet. But what we're left to look at is the rankings, MMA.com rankings, and they have moved Islam Makashev now to number four. Good now, Javier Mendez came out and said that Islam Makashev absolutely deserves the title shot over the winner of Gaethje versus Chandler. And I tend to agree with him because Gaethje, he, there's been a lot of inactivity. And the last time he was in there fighting for the title, he was submitted. And then Michael Chandler, new to the UFC, just got his opportunity to fight for the title, was, was finished by Charles Oliveira. Islam Makashev is on a nine fight win streak. And before anybody says, well, you know, the names on that streak aren't that, is, aren't that impressive. Islam Makashev steps in there against whoever is willing to get in there with him, right. which is not very many people. Most people, it wasn't until he cracked the top 10 that people were saying yes to the fights because they were starting to fall beneath him in the rankings. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, damn, if I'm just going to keep moving down the rankings and this guy's going to move up by default, then I guess I better fight him. Yeah. So I, I don't put any of that against Islam. Islam will fight anybody. I truly believe he, much like Hamzat Chemaev, is the best fighter in the division on the rise and just needs his chance to prove it. What is your opinion on Islam getting the, the winner of Dustin versus Charles over the winner of Gaethje Chandler? I think it's, it's only right. It's, if you're looking at the, the body of work and you can't argue that he's not a star anymore. Like he's a big name in, yeah. the, in the sport. He's one of those scary, invincible guys like Hamzat, like Khabib. And he's got a close tie to Khabib. So people respect him and, and they, they know who he is now. You know, before P Michael Chandler and these guys that, that are kind of bigger names in the division used to go, well, Islam's not doing anything. He's kind of just floating around in the top of the division and, and he needs to yeah. quickly make his way down. Well, he's like, I'm trying to. Nobody's willing to fight me. And you guys are all trying to pair up with each other so you can avoid me. So I'm just going to keep fighting whoever is willing to fight me. You know, RDA's out. Okay, who do you got for me? Dan Hooker. Okay, great. And I'm so, so grateful that Dan Hooker took the fight because if it would have gotten the, the can would have got kicked down a little bit further. I would have been upset because Islam Makashev's doing nothing wrong. He just wants to compete. He just wants to be active and he wants his shot at the title. And also I think the UFC knows that and they realize that and they need to act on it as soon as possible because it, the storyline is really cool. If you think about what Islam yeah. Makashev has the chance to do, Habib got to 29 and 0 with his dad. He won that last fight without his dad in the corner. He retired in the octagon and then basically took his dad's role right then and there as the coach, as the father figure. And yeah. he's done pretty damn good as a coach. Yeah. I think he's still undefeated if I'm if I'm mistaken, but uh he's it, it makes sense now that he kind of got out of the way for Islam Makashev yeah. to take that title. And the longer we wait, the less cool that story is. It's still going to be a really monumental thing when it happens. But I just feel like it would be cooler if the quicker we can get Islam into a title fight, 
the more uh, special it will feel. Yeah, and you know, her father's plan, as Habib says, was thirty and zero. Yeah, and that's the most selfless move you can do mm -hmm. in the sport, in, in a sport that is, quite frankly, a very selfish sport. Is to step away one win shy of that mm -hmm. because a void needs to be filled, which is the void of your father. Right. And he took over, and now he's making all of these proteges, and Islam is the top of the list. Yep. Even that much better. It's pretty incredible, and and I really think that this is something that when it's all said and done, you know, Islam's career and Habib's coaching, he kind of evolves into whatever he's going to do next. We'll look back and say this was a really very cool time yeah. in the lightweight division. But getting into like the specifics and you know, X's and O's of the fight, they're really. As we said with the Hamzat video, there's not much to break down here. Islam looked for his takedown. He got it when he wanted it. Did an excellent job of, of uh, tying up the legs, which is sort of that Dagestani signature grappling mechanic that everybody else is trying to rush to learn now, which is you control the bottom half of your opponent with your legs, freeing up your hands to strike and ultimately open up either a TKO finish or in this case, a submission. Dan extends too far, you get the Kimura grip, step over the head and it's over. Mm -hmm. um, I think that Islam absolutely should wait and see what happens with Charles versus Dustin. And then he should fight the winner of that. No slight to Gaethje Chandler. I mean, I am, I have November 6th circled on mm -hmm. my calendar because I wanna see that fight. Yeah. I think that fight has the potential to be fight of the night. But both of those gentlemen just fought for a title and both of them just came up short. Yeah. It's only right to give it to Islam. Yeah, and that the Michael Chandler versus um, Justin Gaethje is kind of like the uh, most violent man, uh, Justin Gaethje versus yeah. Eddie Alvarez, but a little bit more exciting kind of, no slight to Eddie Alvarez, but uh, Michael Chandler's just kind of got a a, 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 a a ton of steam behind him, yeah. right? So I feel like this fight is a little bit more, it's like the 2.0, slightly better version of that. But like you said, Michael Chandler's only had two fights in the UFC, and Justin Gaethje's been very inactive. Islam Makhachev hasn't been as active as he wanted to be, but he's the last person to blame for that. Nobody wants to fight him. And while you are probably right in the fact that he should wait out and see if he can be the 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 top guy and the contender that you know all laying off the nine fights that he's won in a row is enough. I feel like he's so much better than pretty much anybody that they can put him in there with that it would almost behoove him to just go ahead and demolish somebody else first round quick turnaround 10 fight win streak uh, there's not that much risk in that i don't think he's going to get hurt he said last night he didn't even need to take a shower after the fight because he didn't start sweating or anything like that didn't take any damage if he can go do that again now you're talking about 10 fights in a row. Nobody does anything close to that. And I think after Dan Hooker, he's only going to get bigger names from here, right? Yeah. Unless, of course, these guys back out last minute and they have to pull somebody who's not quite of the same caliber. But his star is quickly rising. That means people want to see him. And more people's eyes will be on Islam Makhachev's next fight, which is what other fighters, selfish yeah. fighters, tend to like. They, they don't want to fight you if you're really tough and nobody's watching. But if you're really tough and a lot of people are going to watch them, even if they lose... They'll roll the dice. They'll roll the dice, right. So I think Islam should maybe consider going after somebody, you know, set his sails right at somebody. Yeah. Call, call somebody out. Maybe it's Tony Ferguson. Maybe it's, you know, one of those other guys. Connor's out, so he can't yeah. call him out. That would be a big one. But... Connor would never accept he's that. He's not going to take the, the fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but maybe go call somebody out that you know you can probably take out pretty quickly with relative ease and then you've got another thing in your in your side yeah. when it comes to negotiations. Yeah, you know, one thing I think would be a nice happy medium to him calling somebody out or him sitting out would be to ask to be the alternate for Dustin versus Charles. I think yeah. nobody would deny him that. I think Dana would certainly give that to him. If he was going to show up and make weight for that fight, that would add some interesting storylines to an already very exciting story. You know, I personally believe there is no clearer cut number one contender than Dustin Poirier. That said, I believe there's no clearer cut number two contender mm -hmm. than Islam Makhachev. So I think him showing up and making weight or at least putting his name in the hat, hey, if something, God forbid, were to fall out between Oliver and Dustin, I'm your guy. I think that might be a nice happy medium to him calling somebody out or just doing nothing. Yeah, the only thing that bothers me about that, and I think that's a good idea, and it could we could see it happen, is Islam is has a very tough cut 
to make 155. He's True. a big fella. Yeah. Even though he's a little bit more trim than, than Khabib, he is still a big guy, and he, he has to suck a lot of weight to make 55. Um, and he would have to do that because it's a championship fight. The only other thing that kind of is a red flag for me is that Charles Oliveira has not been the champion for all that long. So if something happens to Dustin, I could see them putting uh, Islam in, especially right. because uh, Gaethje and, and Michael Chandler will likely both be sent to the hospital after their fight. Yeah. Um, and he's just the right guy to, to stick in there. There's really nobody else that, that fits the, the, the bill. But you now, now you're relying on Dustin Poirier having something happen to him. Dustin right. Poirier shows up every single time. If, Charles Oliveira has something happen to him. It's likely that they're just going to push the fight down and they're not going to put an interim title up on the line because it, Charles hasn't been the champion for all that long and he hasn't played any shenanigans. He's just kind of waited for his opportunity. So I, I, I don't know if we'll see Islam do that. I do think it's a decent idea, but uh, I just feel like with Charles Oliveira being the way he is and Dustin Poirier, those are two guys you can pretty much bank on uh, showing up come fight night. Yeah, that's a good point because I do agree that the interim, there, there would be no reason for an interim belt right. if it were to be Charles. So it would have to be Dustin by that scenario. But Islam versus uh, Charles would, to, be, would, would be incredible. Yeah. And, I, you know, who knows? We'll, we'll probably see that. I think, and we'll, we'll get into predictions on Dustin versus Charles as the fight gets closer. But in my mind right now, as I'm sitting here, that's a 50-50 fight. I have no idea who's going to win that fight. And just one more point with regards to Gaethje and Chandler, just from a practical standpoint, not who deserves this or who deserves that. Islam Makashev, as you said, didn't need a shower after he beat Dan Hooker. Right. These two gentlemen are going to need more than a shower. They're yeah. probably going to need to be next to each other in the hospital after yeah. this is over. So just from a practical standpoint, I don't think they're going to be able to make a quick turnaround and fight. There's probably going to be tremendous injury on both sides in that fight. So I think, I think Islam Makashev's the guy. I think he's on deck, as they say in baseball. I'll use a baseball analogy because mm -hmm. our Houston Astros are, well, getting our butts kicked by the Atlanta Braves right now. But, but they're in the World it, Series. They're in the World Series, yeah. so baseball analogy it is. But I think that Islam Makashev is the guy. He's undeniable. Um, the story is amazing, and I think he's the crown. He's the champ waiting to be crowned. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Drop us a comment and let us know if you think Islam is on deck. I know I put a poll up, and 47% of you guys thought that Islam Makashev was the best lightweight fighter in the world. So it'll be inter interesting to see what your thoughts are after this hooker fight. And let us know. We love chatting with you guys in the comments. Also, if you listen to audio podcasts, check us out there as well. And until the next video, guys, have a wonderful day. Peace.